So the right-wingers have finally, well, done something, which is a huge backlash against the drag queen story hour. Pats on the back, lads. Drag queen story time, drag queen genitals out for Harambe time, I, I don't know. I mean, there's all these different kinds that we've seen prop up on Libs of TikTok, if nowhere else. And uh, I thought we'd go through uh, some of the backlash that's happened and uh, assess whether or not it's good or bad, I suppose. Ah. There's uh, some moral debate around that. Oh, is there? Hmm. So, <laughs> no we'll moral off. debate around drag queen story time. Some moral debate about objecting to drag queen The right-wing backlash, I don't know. There's a debate to be had. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. But uh, we'll start off with uh, a plug here being the cultural revolution that I did with Harry because uh, a lot of this is obviously relevant to the modern United States, which seems to be undergoing its own kind of cultural revolution. And any of the right-wingers who, well, have any backlash towards this, uh, well, they get disappeared, don't they? So if we go to the next one here, we can start off with the story, which is uh, Michigan Attorney General wants drag queens in every school. <laughs> They like, make everything better, apparently. Like every man a king. Just yeah. <laughs> every, every man a drag queen, apparently. So if we go to the uh, next one, we can see the, the full story here in which they say... <laughs> the, Huey Long, <laughs> the Huey Long agenda for the 2020s. Nessel, who was the first openly gay person elected to the statewide office in uh, Michigan, yeah. Michi <laughs> Michigan, made the comments during a civil rights conference while speaking out <laughs> against what she describes as efforts to divide Americans. On the one hand, you have drag queens, and on the other hand, you have civil rights and these mesh together perfectly. Yeah. I also just hate how they endlessly talk about, don't you know the right-wingers are trying to divide Americans by saying oh, yeah. that maybe kids shouldn't be interacting with grown adults? with their genitals out for Harambe. She says, uh, quote, drag queens make everything better. Drag queens are fun. Drag queen for every school, she added. Right. That's an amazing speech. Yep. I just, what a speech. Okay. 40 acres and a mule for everyone. It's turned <laughs> into a drag queen for every school. If we go to the next one as well, we can also see uh, this has just been propping up. I mean, I know a lot of people looked at LA Pride, San Francisco Pride, and uh, there's plenty of these clips going yeah. around again, where you look, and the biggest story for me here is not that you've got, you know, what's going on there and then yeah. kids it's the parents the human beings who have got kids and brought them here and are like come on engage wear the shirt that says equality and isn't the kids this fantastic just standing there like why am i here mm. and uh well what's that kid gonna grow up into as well why are you so obsessed with making sure your kid gets a front row seat at these sort of things is the bigger question for me and if we go to the next one this is where the main story comes into it where the uh, debate around Ooh. well is the right wing evil what have they done so a small group of protesters confronted drag queen and ex-vice reporter Kyle Chu at a drag queen story hour event in San Lorenz, California, near San Francisco. The drag queen is called a pedophile, and the parents are slammed for bringing their kids to the event by the uh, right-wing protesters. I suppose we'll play it and we'll just uh, see what they did. Who, who brought the pedophile? Okay, first of all, you Hold on. have to wear masks. No, thank you. Who brought the pedophile? It's not optional. We want to know. You're required. We want to know. Oh, we're medically exempt. Thank you, though. Of course. Who brought the pedophile? I just want to know. The story time is actually for children. It's for, parents. well, then why is the pedophile here? So if you guys could see Why did you, no, 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 no. We want to know why there's a pedophile here. We saw videos of what I'm that sorry, thing does. Yeah. Why did you, uh, hey. It's got videos. You see you allow pedophiles in here. To do to little children. Yeah. You why did you allow the pedophiles? on YouTube of what it wants to do to little children. Why did you bring the pedophile? I don't, you, I don't understand. I don't understand. Get out of here, you pedophile! Get out of here! Sir, you, you're not safe here! Get out of here! Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Disgusting. Look, no, this is sick. You are sick. You are sick. Look at these poor children. It's all based on sexual. These poor children. These poor children. How dare you guys? You godless whores! You guys are sick. <laughs> I, mean, I can't help but laugh because <laughs> uh, he's uh, a very entertaining guy in the way that he just calls them out like that. I think the official term is direct action. Yeah, direct action that he's uh, taking. That's the, that's what the left would call this. Yeah, but okay, in, let's... in such enemy territory as well. Remember, this is in San yeah. Francisco. Uh, so I haven't seen this right. If there's anyone who doesn't live in San, San Francisco watching this, no one in Britain is wearing masks. Zero. No one. Like literally zero people in this country. You can walk around. You will see zero masks. There is no medical reason to wear the mask anymore. It's not mandated by, like, the World Health Organization. It's not recommended by anyone. Although this I must interrupt and say, for some reason, YouTube requires us to say that it still can play a role in combating the virus. But it can still play a role in combating the virus, <laughs> or apparently. Or be shot. So. <laughs> but the point is, no one in Britain is wearing masks, and so this is quite clearly a virtue signal. And the fact that they're making the kids wear the masks just seems atrocious to me. But it gives you such Horrible. a picture, doesn't yeah. it? And you're right to pick up on that, because it's not just the fact that, uh, well, 
this local place has decided to have Drag Queen Story Hour, in which they've invited an individual to come up and do this. And uh, the big question is why, before we get to anything else. Yeah. And then we have the fact that the kids are masked, yeah. the parents are masked. I mean, this is the kind of place you would see where there would be a parents' evening, where they would debate which number of Black Lives Matter flags oh, and yeah. progress flags should they have in the classrooms. Yeah. Not whether or not it's right to propagandize defenseless children, but how much should be acceptable in our department. I can't help but notice that also it's a very feminine space that the men is. are entering into. Mm. Uh, it's, it's women <laughs> and feminized men who are conducting Drag Queen Story Hour, and then it's embodiments of the patriarchy coming in and saying, no, this is wrong, you're a pedo. Yeah, which, um, uh, I must say, though, I don't know if there's any evidence to suggest that individual no, is a pedo, also not know. defaming that individual. I am merely repeating the allegation that was made by the man to explain that this is very clearly a conflict of masculine and feminine values. Yeah, I mean, you can see it in black and white there. And yes. also the fact that it's Actually, such it's in living color. <laughs> a hostile environment. And like I'm getting at the point that this is uh, probably one of the most extreme places in the West, frankly, San Francisco. Oh, yeah. So the fact that it's uh, like this is not really a surprise, but then you start to wonder whether or not you should write off these kind of places. But there's also the fact that uh, Andy No mentions that uh, the individual, Kyle there, a drag queen story time performer, now says that uh, he fears for his life. I think that's the right pronouns, or I'll be shot again. Who knows? Don't know. Double bullets. And if we go to the clip here, you can see that the parents are then shown a video by the men who have turned up, the men's men, who are like, hey, by the way, you don't know who this is, presumably, so watch this video. Do you have a guess what the video might contain? Uh, it's not. I don't make any guesses about this. It's not the most flattering thing. So if we go to the next one, we have uh, the post millennial who reported on this. I think uh, Andy Poe wrote this as well. Drag queen who sings All the Kids Who Look Up to Me Can Suck My D hosts story time at San, San Francisco Area Library. Right. So I'm starting to think that the allegation of them being a pedo isn't ill founded. Well, it, there is a video which uh, they demonstrated, which uh, SNL paid for to put on their show, where you have the Satanist imagery throughout, in which the drag queen tells you about uh, the fact that uh, they can do what they want, and also if there's any kids that look up to them, they should suck their D. That's, uh, that, that's a real thing. Well, I mean, <laughs> how, how are the protesters wrong? I mean, they've got an argument there, or at least some reasons as to why they might have their opinions. Drag Queen won't be suing for defamation anytime soon. We'll see. But if we go to the next one here, we then have the police response, which is to investigate the evil men. Of course, you have here the sheriffs have opened a hate crime investigation into the protest event, the Drag Queen story time, for this man, presumably, and his other fellow men who turned up. Apparently, there were quite a few of them. There's Not very feminized men, no. I happen to note. If you uh, scroll down here, there is uh, one argument here, which is, of course, that there might be a threat because he's wearing a T-shirt that says, kill your local pedophile, and is then shouting at an individual that they are a pedophile for doing this, which, uh, okay, there may be a claim there of uh, criminal wrongdoing, you could argue, but... Uh, Make a note, don't kill anyone. That's <laughs> without the law yeah. being uh, the just, case. Just don't kill anyone. Of course, but there we have it. That's the events, and that's where the debate comes in because there's no debate about whether or not you should have those kind of environments for children endlessly no. in fact go further you know why not have the kids put money into their clothes and have them dance with them <sighs> yep. as we've seen previously but uh people objecting has to be talked about if we go to the next one we then have the school's response which is quote the incident happened on a saturday june 11th where drag queen panda dulce was set to read to a group of children she told ktvuv the proud boys S sorry to interrupt is panda dulce the one who is singing the kids can suck my d yes Right, so that's the same drag queen. It's the same individual. Right, so actually a paedophile. Right, okay. Well, that's uh, part of the rap. She, she, he, them, the Whatever. person would probably argue that it is, you know, satire or something like that. So I don't care. You, you can, like, you can argue that all you want, but I don't believe you. It, it's, uh, <laughs> it's meant to be a comedic rap, but at the same time, I can see why the lads would have their opinions. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just think that might be a tad inappropriate. But that individual said that it was the Proud Boys who interrupted the start of the story hour. That's the only source I can find right. for claiming that these guys are Proud Boys, is the individual who's being called a nonce. Uh, is like, the Proud Boys did this, but none of the men have been identified by anyone else as Proud Boys, as far as I am aware from the evidence. No. And it just seems to be they made this up, and everyone else in the media has reprinted it. Sue Granzilla, a former elementary school teacher, said, It's appalling to me that anyone can come out and attack other people in front of children just for being who they are. What? <sighs> okay. Yeah. 
I, I mean, that's the problem yeah. here, is it? Yeah, it's that's the problem. Not, not the fact that it's become the norm in American society that you have drag queen story hour or drag queen, well, It's not that you're debauching clubs. children. It's no. not that you're actively debauching children. I mean, I heard the guys there saying, this is built on sexuality, and that's completely true. Why are you presenting it to children? What else could it be for? Yeah. Why else does this then progress to, as we've seen in Texas, of all places, uh, kids putting dollar notes into the drag queen's underwear? And, Purple uh, state. Yeah, and the mothers looking on and cheering and taking pictures. Mm. I mean, that's the most worrying part, frankly, is the, is the parents here. Like, yeah. what the hell is wrong with you? Like, well, it's the mothers in control and the feminized men who are just accepting it and going along with it. The patriarchy down. needs to make a return, in my opinion. And I'm going to keep saying purple state until the Texans make it a red state again. <laughs> there is uh, one individual who is very mad about all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, Taylor Lorenz, of all people, is very <laughs> salty. If we go to the next one here, we have uh, Libs of TikTok, who was uh, documenting all this and pointing out that this takes place and, well, is bad, if nothing else. And uh, then you have Taylor Lorenz saying that LGBTQ activists have called out Libs of TikTok escalating attacks on the community in recent weeks. How dare she? Whenever I, hear ta whenever I hear Taylor Lorenz's name, all I picture is a woman of about 50 and the, the, the sort of soft, sweeping sounds of the Sahara Desert in the background. The wasted life. Yeah. The wasted half century. The, the, the barrenness that comes out of Taylor Lorenz is just palpable to me. So Taylor is also uh, continually upset. If we go to the next one, she then decides to just make stuff up about all this. Because uh, <laughs> Cause what else is a barren woman going to do? Yeah, she's got nothing else to do this evening. So I've got kids <laughs> to take care of. So Libs of TikTok uh, got a response. She's not going to have for dinner with her husband or anything. Elon responded to Libs of TikTok, promoting all this and showing that it had taken place. And then Libs of TikTok got a bunch of death threats and of was like, I reported all these as nothing has happened. And Elon Musk, obviously being the uh, new owner of the Libs, uh, decided to say why and got a response and then Taylor Lorenz decided to come out with as I reported the Babylon Bee which is Musk uh, which Musk has close ties to invested in libs of TikTok has close ties to yeah Elon Musk reads the battle Babylon Bee yeah that's the close tie yeah we uh, know the investment part uh, apparently 100% made up like, okay just on the dot just made that up for a story but okay hang on a second let's assume that she isn't a lying barren old husk of a woman and that was true so? Well, don't you know Libs of TikTok is exposing left and therefore causing attacks against the left because people are upset about what the left is doing, which means showing them it is the problem, not what the left is doing. Yeah. Like, sorry, there's nothing wrong with the Babylon Bee investing in Libs of TikTok or whatever, even if they wanted to, even if they did. But 100% apparently, no. As you can see, yeah. Seth Dillon saying here, which is, uh, you probably should have reached out to me before reporting fake news. <laughs> we uh, don't invest in anything. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> with the exception of a third joke, because the, the lefties are going, oh, the Babylon Bee only has two jokes. And he's like, yeah, well, we're working on our third. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get there by Scheduled for release in the summer of 2024. <laughs> yeah, it's completely taking it up. Okay, the next one as well, we can see Taylor's response, which That's is good. she took it very well. If you can scroll down there. Uh, auto-blocked by Twitter. But, uh, what? Twitter has an auto-block feature? Apparently. I, I have no idea how this works. Apparently this is presumably a new thing right, then. Okay. Which is uh, Taylor reported him for being spam. Custom then, made for Taylor Lorenz, probably. <laughs> and her hurt feels. Yeah. If we go to the next one as well, this is the accusation made by people like that because, uh, well, what happened here? Well, a local library in San Francisco, one of the most slashy areas of the country, mm -hmm. decided they would host Drag Queen Story Hour, as they usually do every Tuesday, presumably. So why else would they be doing? And uh, lives of TikTok pick up on it and publicly made it known that was taking place. And quote from their place here, as you can see there, this story time is designed for preschool aged children. Oh. And uh, said, yeah, that's that's bad. And also it's funded by the taxpayer. Of course it is. And some people turned up and said, well, that's nonce, leave nonce. And there's the debate. What, who's in the wrong here? I was like, well, clearly for the people debauching children, like, you yeah. shouldn't be engaging in that, regardless of the allegations made against that individual. Like, Especially it really if matter. someone sings lyrics like, the children who look up to me can suck my D. It's pretty weird, to say the least. But then uh, we have the fact that this person here says, today, eight to ten Proud Boys stormed the area. Again, Proud Boys, there's no evidence of that. They weren't wearing Proud Boy. I mean, the Proud Boys have, like, a, a uniform, that black and gold trim yep. shirt, right? So that's usually how they identify themselves. It's a joke uniform. <laughs> is it? I don't but know. The whole thing's a joke, isn't it? Well, I suppose I mean. it probably is. But the like, why weren't they wearing the uniform, you know, to identify themselves? Presumably, this is the interesting thing. Why did they? Why did the leftists say these guys are proud boys when there's no evidence? Well, the evidence is that... They say a lot of things on that evidence, well, no, Callum. The evidence is that they're men, they're masculine, <laughs> and they oppose nonsery, therefore must be members of the far right. Huh. That is really how their thought process went, and then they just went, Proud Boys. 
Proud Boys have really expanded their reach <laughs> recently, haven't they? Just, are you a man? You're a Proud Boy. <laughs> okay, Proud Boys. <laughs> man who's not <laughs> exactly, man who's not prepared to become a pedo enabler. Wow, I look like a typical Proud Boy. You ever seen Gavin McGuinness talk about the origins of the Proud Boys? I probably have, but go on, remind There's, me. The, the funniest thing, the Proud Boy thing. It's like a song for some Disney song or something, apparently, they made up. Right. It was like, you're a Proud Boy, a loving Proud Boy, or some crap like that. Right, okay. Like, the initiation program is they punch you and you have to name three breakfast cereals. Like, the whole thing is just a meme that then, like, right. blew up. And then the police were like, well, these are neo-Nazis. <laughs> like, and now, even if you're just a man with a beard, <laughs> you're a proud boy. It's got a bit out of hand. Yeah, like, it's a complete joke. And yeah. uh, I, I love it. I love that just the left are like, well, they're proud boys. So like, what did they do? They opposed nonsery. Okay. <laughs> that's, Sorry. that's enough. So they also uh, go on to say that this account has gone from posting cringe compilations to target selection... Uh, for domestic terrorists oh. in these last three months flat. And she is still hard at work making sure these far-right militias have their next target. I'm like, what What target? For what what far-right militias? I, I mean, number one, yeah, that doesn't exist. Um, but also, pointing out that the left engage in, well, some kind of Nazi stuff, that's helping the far-right. But also, there was an attempted assassination on Kavanaugh the other day. Do you think you might be doing exactly what you're accusing them of doing? Well, like, why did you name it? What was it? Sorry, let's go go back up there. Because she names the woman who runs Libs of TikTok, right? Yeah, I can't remember yeah, her name. Chaya Raychik or whatever. Why are you naming her like that? As if you you think you're not pay, you know, like painting a target on them, like they did with Kavanaugh. They like, know. They just they don't know. care. Because exactly. it's the opposition, and therefore they can die. Yeah. Anything that happens to us is wrong. Yes, exactly. Even name calling. So she says, uh, we get a lot of, what are you talking about? They're, all they're doing is posting Libs in their own words. <laughs> Which is, uh, again, still happening. That's all she's done. Yeah. She's posting libs in their own words, which is, we want to set up drag queen events, uh, some more lewd than others, let's say, and uh, preschool kids invited, please. Why? Oh, no. The libs' own words. And <laughs> libs of TikTok exposes that. There's also the funny response to this, which I saw Taylor Lorenz trying to claim that she's a working class hero. Can you, can you think why? No. She's from a working class background, don't you know? Well, what's her working class background? Uh, being in a Swiss boarding school that costs quite a lot of money. Oh, really? <laughs> Swiss boarding school, typical of the working class background that I came from, incidentally. If we go to the next one here, you can see Taylor defending herself. We click on the first one, there's just her being like, uh, don't you know, I went to public school my entire life, but I do one short uh, study abroad program for US kids, and I'm a member of the European elite. Whoa. It's you like, do write, or you did write for the New York Times, or no, the Washington Post. I still does. And if you go to the next I image I thought she, I oh, know, someone else who quit. We can see the fact, uh, what, what is that study abroad that she did? Uh, before you Google, I went to a small private Swiss boarding school. <laughs> Tuition is $90,000. What? Being surrounded by privilege only highlighted the immense disparity between what I grew up with and what others didn't. It's why right. it's so important to understand the personal experiences are not universal. How did you end up getting to the small private Swiss boarding school? 90 grand. This is like a small loan of a million dollars. Yeah. I only went to a small private boarding school in Switzerland for my <laughs> childhood. Like Kim Jong-un, yeah. incidentally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like... where she probably met him, actually. <laughs> oh, how are you doing? I'm also a member of the working class. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, that's the joke. Yeah. And then we have the, the final smear I wanted to demonstrate that the uh, leftists have been up to in regards to Lebs right. of TikTok because they're trying to get her killed, presumably. She's had to flee her home for people who might not know yeah. to a more safe location. And uh, this smear here is strange. As you can see from Media Matters and openly, well, harassment organization, frankly. They say, right-wing media are fear-mongering about twi Title IX protections for LGBTQ students that have been fortified under the Biden administration. Oh, yeah. I mean, it sounds like they're mocking us, using yeah. the term fortified. Yes, frankly. it does. The right-wing fury towards Title IX protections has led to threats of violence, including a bomb threat that shut down a Wisconsin middle school, forcing students to complete the year virtually. I mean, isn't that horrible? I mean, It does sound terrible, yeah. How could the right-wing do this? I mean, the right-wing... Uh, seeing us trying to protect so the holy left just protect uh, innocent homosexual people and uh, then they just start sending in bomb threats to a school I mean pfft. incidentally I've been at, like when I was at the the Mythicist event in 2018 it got you know temporarily um, put out because of a bomb threat there it's like as if these bomb threats didn't go one way but okay fine yeah but there's also just the fact of uh, there we go how can the right wing do this again the right wing keeps shutting down these horrible uh Oh, well, no, wonderful events in which we only do virtuous things. If we go to the next link here, we can see why the public was so upset. And uh, it shouldn't have just been the right wing that were upset in regards to this. A Wisconsin school district filed a Title IX complaint against three middle school students, accusing them of sexual harassment, 
for using the incorrect pronouns when addressing another student. Right, but it's not sexual harassment when some nonce drag queen is like, by the way, you're going to have to sit here while I read your story and sing about how you're going to suck my D. No, no, that's that's not sexual harassment. That's propriety. Uh, getting your children land. to put tenors in, in a drag queen's yeah. thong is also not sexual harassment. It's not Nothing wrong child with that. abuse. Yeah. That's uh, progression, as we are told. Whereas what happened here, I mean, we won't play the clip, but uh, what happened is there was a 13-year-old boy who's mm -hmm. that daughter's boy there, and uh, he was being screamed at by one of the other students who insisted they were non-binary, and the 13-year-old boy was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, stupid? <laughs> and uh, the non-binary student was like, call me they, them. And he, the 13-year-old was like, it's my constitutional right to not go to hell. <laughs> Smart 13-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, apparently that is all true. Like, <laughs> So that's the funny thing. Yeah. But then the fact uh, the school responded by charging the student, the 13-year-old boy, with sexual harassment because of that. Because he said it's my constitutional right, including two other boys as well. Call me they or you're raping me. Yes. And uh, the school did that. And then the story blew up because the school is obviously in the wrong. Yeah. And people like Lives of TikTok told people that this had happened. And then people who are not connected or even told to do so by the evil right send apparently bomb threats to this school and it gets shut down. It's like, how could the right wing do this? I mean, again, number one, no one in the right called for that. So, no, right out of the gate, didn't happen. And uh, as for what caused this to blow up, well, that's the left wing ideology at play there, which is the gender ideology of saying that call me the right pronouns or you're a rapist. I mean, I would have thought the, the fact that this is an obvious injustice is what caused this to blow up. The three 13-year-old boys. Yeah. I mean, clearly members of the patriarchal elite, presumably. And also clearly, you know, the, the person going, use my pronouns or else, is someone who has been groomed by the left. But there we have it. That is uh, what I, summing up there, is the right-wing backlash to the drag schools. And it has been good. We've also seen a lot of, uh, well, legislators bring forth bills to get rid of that. Yeah. And make Just, it illegal. So, but I mean... Brighter future, perhaps. I, I Well, maybe. But I've seen this, it's like, well, maybe we should make these child drag shows illegal. It's like, aren't they already illegal? I, I would have thought so. <laughs> yeah. Don't you already have laws that say you can't show sexual content to children? Well, I, I guess we'll find out in the courts. <laughs> yeah, I suppose we will. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast Lotus Eaters, you can become a member and find all of our premium content on lotuseaters.com, including this premium video, Why Feminist Immigration Policy Will Save the West, by Callum. If you're interested in following Callum on social media, you can find him on Getter at Callum. Thank you and goodbye.